winding of the ignition coil. And this includes doing wiggle tests because the primary circuit includes everything from point A, the trigger, to point C or D, the coil. And we need to understand what they mean because if we look at Chrysler, it gives us a brief description and it just says that the coil primary circuit did not achieve a peak current for a period from three to six seconds. Okay, what's three to six seconds in the lifetime of an ignition system? What's an ignition cycle? What's a firing event? Firing event at idle, like two to three Breaking milliseconds, but then all of a sudden it goes into like a, a RPM limiter situation where I rev it up and all of a sudden it's going and it's dropping cylinders. Well, if you look at it with your scope, you'll see that you're dropping your pattern down below that quarter of a volt and that's why I'm dropping cylinders because it's losing its sync or its, its relationship to position so of that limitations of a generic scan tool. I absolutely am not knocking scan tools. I don't, don't think I'm, I'm batting snap on about this. I'm not, I'm not doing that. It's just understanding that at times our generic scan tools just are not going to see the information correctly. So therefore, we might see some weird crap that just doesn't make sense. And, and what I always say, and, and it's always one of these key on situations where I'm looking at that information, and, and I always say, move forward. Start cranking and see what you have when you start cranking. And if everything looks normal, A, get yourself a different scan tool from a different make and try that one. Or B, just let's just move forward because we know what our problem is. It's a no start. And, and it's, it's not a PCM. I'm, I'm telling you it's no. not. Crank sensor. It says that it's got seven machine slots, six of which are equally spaced at 60 degrees apart. Well, but it, it, it tells us that spaced, the seventh spot is spaced at a 10 degree offset to identify top dead center. I've got to know where top dead center is. Okay, a couple of questions. My questions. Could the PCM be inserting information for a failed component? This goes backwards and the answer is yes, absolutely. I told you, don't trust your scan tool. Test your parts. If the computer has reference to engine position twice, wouldn't at least one system work? My point to there is this. Why doesn't it use the 24X? If it loses the 7X, why doesn't it use the 24X to make the system function? It's just one of those deals that have to completely redesign the entire system. Because think about this, the old 2.8 liters, they didn't have the 24X. The early 3.1 liters, they didn't have the 24X. The only input they had was the 7X sensor. It was just an addition to the system, and it was just there for emission control. Smooth that engine out. Let's take a little bit more control of the fuel injector so we can control our emissions a little bit tighter. That's the only reason we got the 24X. I always think of the Hondas with the three magnetic reluctance type sensors inside the distributor. If one of those fails, the system still runs. It's just the way that system's designed. All three of those go to the processor, to the PCM. And then the PCM controls, if you will, the igniter or the control module, and that's what controls the primary circuit. So it's just a completely different system. Lastly, I had talked about, we have a tech line. This tech line has several purposes. This tech line is to assist technicians with problems. Just like I helped that guy with that 7X problem, that's what we do all day long. There's three and a half of us there. We're all master techs. We're all L1 certified. That's what we do. We're free of charge. We share information. We help you guys with problems. If you have problems with our parts, use that phone number. If you don't tell us it's broke, it never gets fixed. We make thousands and thousands. We got 38,000 part numbers. Plus, you got to add that time to the number we make each year. And if you don't tell us there's a problem in the field, it's hard for us to say, okay, we'll fix it because we don't know it's broke, we don't fix it, okay? So that's another reason for that 800 number. Take advantage of it. And lastly, go to our website. Our website is loaded full of tons of good technical information. I made the comment if you have a magnetic reluctance type sensor and you want to know what the resistance value is, that is at our website. There's a database that has all that information. I have what's called the Knowledge Center. That Knowledge Center has 21,000 part numbers in there and it contains everything. It's got a database for counterpoints if there's any articles that apply to it. You can go to that article and read about how does it work, what does it do, how did it work on that car, how did they fix that car. That's what that's about. Um, sales drawings.